Let's get started by taking a quick look at the MATLAB interface. The most prominent window is here in the center, that's the command window. This is similar to other command line interfaces that you might be used to using from other IDEs. We can do things here like do one plus two and MATLAB will return the answer, it's three. We can type in functions like cosine of zero and MATLAB will return one. And we can also clear the screen with CLC. On the right here, we see the workspace. This is where MATLAB stores all the variables we've created in this session. We can see that we've already got ANS in the value of one. ANS stands for answer, and that's what MATLAB returns when we don't ask for a variable. So for instance, when we typed cosine of zero, MATLAB assigned ANS equals one. We can create our own variables. I'll type in my var, and I'll set it equal to three plus four. MATLAB says, yep, my var is equal to seven. And we can see that now over here in the workspace. My var with a value of seven. And MATLAB also tells us the class, which is double. We can remove a variable from the workspace by right-clicking on the variable and selecting delete or hitting the delete key. You can also do it from the command line by saying clear and then whichever variable you want to clear. So I'll clear my var. And then we can see that gets removed from the workspace. You can also remove all the variables from the workspace by typing clear all. I'll go ahead and clear the screen again with CLC. And we can see here on the left, we have our folder view. Our current folder is shown up here in the taskbar. And if this contained any more files or folders, they'd be shown over here in the current folder view. You can always create new files if you want to by right clicking and selecting new file or new folder amongst other things, but we don't need to do that right now. One last thing. MATLAB also creates a history of all the commands that we've entered. We can get to this by going to Layout, Command History, and we'll pick Doct for now. This shows our command history down here on the right. If you want to run one of these commands again, you can double click it. You see MATLAB runs it automatically, and our variable is created in the workspace. You can also click and drag a command into the command window, and that allows you to edit it. So we'll set my var equal to 10 instead. Just like many other IDEs, you can also press the up arrow while you're in the command line interface and cycle through the commands you've used. I'll clear the screen one last time and we're ready to go. Let's create some simple variables. We'll make a scalar, a vector, and a matrix. To start off, we'll go to the command window and I'll clear our workspace with clear all. Looks good. Creating scalars is really simple. We create a variable name, my scalar, and we'll just set it equal to 10. If we add a semicolon at the end of the line, it will suppress the output in the command line here. So if I press enter now, we don't see my scalar equals 10 returned from MATLAB, but we can see that it's been created here in the workspace. Creating a vector is pretty easy as well. We'll create a variable called my vector. And to create a vector, we use square brackets. And if it's a row vector, we separate the elements with a space. So I'll do four, five, and six. I won't put a semicolon and suppress the output this time so we can see that my vector equals four, five, six, and it's also created over in the workspace. Let's create a column vector. I'll call it my vector col for a column. And to create a column vector, we still use square brackets, but we separate the elements with semicolons. So I'll do seven, eight, and nine. And we see that a column vector is created. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and let's see how to create a matrix. We'll say my matrix. And we build this almost exactly the same way as we do with vectors. We'll create the first row in our matrix four, five, six, and then we separate that with a semicolon seven, eight, nine, and then I'll put in one, two, three. So we'll create a three by three matrix. Pressing enter. We see that our matrix is created. And how do we pull elements out of these matrices or vectors? That's pretty easy as well. We just index them so we can say my matrix, and then we put in some parentheses, and this is gonna take two arguments. The first is the row we want, and the second is the column. So if we wanted to extract the number five from my matrix, that would be row number one, column number two. And MATLAB says, yep, that's five. We can also get a whole row or column if we want. So for instance, if we wanted to extract the middle row from my matrix, we can say my matrix and use our parentheses. And we want row two 
and we want all columns of row two. And the way we tell MATLAB we want all columns is to use a colon. If we hit enter, we see that we get back a row vector of seven, eight, and nine. I'm gonna clear the screen real quick, bring my matrix back up so we can see it. There we go. So let's go ahead and extract a column vector. I'll say my matrix and I can tab complete that. Let's extract the last column. So we want all of the rows in column three. And there we go, six, nine, and three. We can also extract a subset of the rows or columns if we want. So again, I'll bring up my matrix just so we can see it. And let's pull out the two and three of row three. So I can say my matrix. And now I want row three, but I only want columns two and three. So we say two colon three to give me columns two through three. If I hit enter, we see that we get two and three back. And let's finish up by clearing the screen. Let's take a quick look at how MATLAB works with the value formats. We can see for all the variables and vectors we've created so far, MATLAB saves them as a double. A double is just a 64-bit floating point number, meaning it can have a whole number and decimal part. But we don't have to keep values in that format. Let's create a new variable here. I'll call it my pi. I do enjoy some pi. And I'll set it equal to pi, pi. MATLAB has that constant built in. I'll hit enter without a semicolon here so we can see the return. 3.1416, you can see that MATLAB is rounding off the value here to four decimal points. Just a quick note, MATLAB isn't actually rounding this off, it's just showing it to us in a short format. We can change how MATLAB shows things to us on screen by using the format command. For instance, if I say format long, and then ask it to show my pi, we'll see we, it shows us lots more digits. If we're looking at lots of values on screen though, that can sometimes get overwhelming, so we're gonna keep the format short for now. You can always check out the MATLAB documentation to see all the different formats available. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. So we see that MATLAB set the default value of my pi to a double. We can also change that to single precision, which is a 32-bit value if we want. I'm gonna say my pi single, and we just use the function single, and then in there we pass it my pi. We see the MATLAB's telling us explicitly now that it's a single precision value. Please note if you don't see the class column in the workspace, you can always right click near name and value and choose class from the drop down menu. And we see in the workspace, indeed, that's true. My pi single is a class of single. You might do this if 64 bit values are overkill and you want to save some space when you're creating maybe millions of values. MATLAB can also deal with Booleans. You can easily create a Boolean by creating a variable and setting it equal to either true or false. If I say true, we'll see that MATLAB says, oh, yep, this is a logical value and it's one. Again, we can see in the workspace, it has a my bool and notice that its icon is a check mark indicating that it's a logical value and not a matrix like the other ones. We can also convert a numerical value to a Boolean if we want. Say my num here for my number, and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. And now I'll say my num bool, and we can use the logical keyword and pass it my num. And since that was zero, my num bool should be false. And we can see that it's equal to zero. Most of the time we can just get by with letting MATLAB assign everything as a double, but if you ever need to change it, now you know how. Often, if we're working with complicated data sets, we want to be able to associate different data types, like, say, vectors and strings together in a single construct. And MATLAB allows us to do that with cell arrays. I found these really, really useful in my work, so I wanted to show them to you here. Let's go ahead and clear the screen, and I'm going to clear the workspace while we're at it. There we go. So you can think of a cell array like a matrix, but each element in that matrix can be a different data type. So let's just go ahead and create one to see how it works. I'm gonna call it my cell. And instead of creating this with parentheses or square brackets, we're gonna create this with curly brackets. So I'm gonna open and close those. And for the first element in our cell array, I'm gonna create a vector. 